Hi there, C.J. Miller. I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm across the Red River from beautiful Bossier City, Louisiana. I'm in the west end of downtown, uh, kind of in between where I used to live and where I live now. And I like to think about things uh, when I come out for these little walks at night and check out different areas of town, take different routes. I can tell you this... Sunday by 1 a.m. <laughs> Nothing happens downtown. But these police, they patrol. And if you come down here and you make a wrong turn or you go too fast or something, they will clock you. They will clock you. Uh, so I do not, I do not, uh, Oh, I'll, I'll be nice to police, and, and actually one of my best friends is an ex-police officer, ex bozier police officer. Uh, he left the job due to, like, uh, uh, I, I think he just decided that he was, like, uh, too old for this shit or something <laughs> at one point. But, yeah, no, um, he's a great guy. Uh, okay, so, in revisiting... Uh, it's coming out and it gives me a kind of reflection and it's really good to consider things like this that I'm going to consider because it's a renewal of the gratitude for the life that I have and what can I do to further my gratitude? What can I do to personally make myself more grateful about the good things that I have and how, because it's not just about my life, how can uh, my mood and my light upon this earth, however it is, how can it be of, I don't know, some kind of positivity, you know? And so, I just a happy reflection on things, you know? Uh, <laughs> sometimes we think on that and it seems topical and sometimes not. Okay, um, but the reason why I say this is because I'm going to talk in telling this story uh, about, uh, just, you know, I, I told you about the one guy, the, he's, a, he's a, one of my best friends and I have a lot of respect for him. And, uh, like there's nothing that this guy doesn't do that he wants to do. And, uh, even if sometimes he decides he needs to make a course correction, he really, you know, that's cool. He's, he's, he's great for that, but he's a great guy, you know? And uh, he's so funny. He's one of my best friends. And uh, you would think that maybe we wouldn't even necessarily, like, get along as people. But we do. And it's like, wow. This is a little sign here. It says, we're all damaged. It's how we still love with a broken heart that matters. So that's poetry on the sidewalk I didn't I didn't put it down there it's kind of stenciled if someone's gonna do any sort of like creative uh graffitiing or something like that I'd like to I'd like it to be at least a positive <sighs> some LED lights across the street or whatever so this is the Shreveport uh common park uh and my story begins with this when I uh Moved back from New Orleans uh, and uh, rented a room, whatever, from a guy. And it wasn't like it was like, like he had, it was like I didn't rent a room from him. He was a roommate. Well, like he rent, you know, it was but whatever. It was a two bedroom place uh, or kind of a shotgun kind of situation or whatever, where I took the front room, he took the back, and in the middle was a ki kitchen, a bathroom, whatever. It, it, it just, it, we weren't going to get along as housemates. And I knew that within the first couple of months. That really wasn't going to uh, work itself out. And that's okay. Sometimes you try some things, and then you, you find out, hey, well, you know, I'm kind of grateful that I can do that. So... Uh, but, but I, I knew this uh, one guy, and he had two daughters that lived with them, and he, he was uh, leasing out a couple of uh, rooms out of his house. And, like, not just a room, but, it, like, you know, it was kind of cool, like, for the 
basically, essentially, for what you would rent a room, uh, you could, it was a nice space, you know, and uh, it was cool. It was, it was it was great. And so what happened was, on this situation, this particular situation, is that I, uh, uh, yeah, subletted from him, and the reason why he was able to do this and he didn't mind doing this because he was making a uh, change in his life. He was a tradesman, you know, uh, uh, construction, clean, you know, whatever, anything to do with like home maintenance, building maintenance, whatever. I mean, he could do that. So he, he, he was able to do that. So um, that was cool. But he was wanting to make a change because he his thing was, well, if I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do this work. Why should I do it for somebody else when I could do it for myself, you know? And so he uh, started, I was there to see him make his first purchase. He bought uh, a house, a little fourplex, and uh, he uh, reworked it, uh, put appliances in where it needed to be. Just, I mean, just really just uh, made it, made a, a rental you know basically four rental properties out of this out of this fourplex and uh yeah and from there he just kind of like acquired and flipped and stuff like that and basically became uh uh you know someone doing the work for himself and because he could do it i mean he literally worked out of he ran his business out of his bedroom in the house that i that 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 I lived in and uh yeah I lived in the front of the house and everything like that so it was kind of cool uh and that mad respect for that guy and yeah I mean he like when it comes to work I've seen his work he doesn't cut corners in his work uh and when it comes to uh integrity he's pretty much got it you know and uh he, he's found a, a right comfortable niche for himself and that's very inspirational so that that person even though uh well i don't really see him around that much but because i live downtown and he kind of like wow he's like all over the place but i'll every once in a while i'll go by and i'll see one of his business signs on a property that he's uh reworked or he's and it's like wow yeah okay cool that's great <laughs> you know so like he's he what he's doing it's still out there going. So that that's cool, people. These are the kind of people that inspire me uh, because they're generally they have a they have a, a positive light about them, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of my sister's uh, neighbors uh, works for his company because it's a small world, right? So that's going cool. So anyway, uh, what uh, that's the word I hear. Anyway, I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I moved downtown to this Fairmont building, which is, we're going to come up on the corner here, the Fairmont. Uh, and I always, like, from my balcony, I'll point over and say, hey, this is the Fairmont. But that was uh, coming into 2017. No, it was earlier than that. Uh, around... Somewhere around, let me do some math in my head, I'll tell you. We're 24 now, so 23. Uh, anyway, towards the end of 2016, like September of 2016, I guess, I don't know. But I lived here for the first year, and my whole idea in living in the Fairmont, uh, and it's kind of like, you know, I didn't have anything, really. Uh, I had my clothes. I had a few little things. I maybe had, uh, how many guitars did I have? I had started to acquire some guitars. Uh, I have more now, but, uh, and then, uh, some furniture, but I had the furniture that I do have. It's out that I did have when I, it is on the uh, uh, balcony where I live now. I didn't keep any of the uh, furniture because it was like, you know, way, way like, like substandard furniture. Uh, and when I moved over, it was uh, going to be new 
uh, apartments and everything like that. And I wanted to collectively, individually get new things. You know, by that by that point, I could do that. You know, but uh, but at this time, no, I needed to. Uh, I needed to be. It was a place to gather and save money. I needed to be in that position. So basically, I stayed here for a year. Was going to move out at the end of that second year, but I had gotten word of the uh, place where I live now where they were going to build it. Uh, well, right when they had approved everything, got all the permits, before they could really break ground, COVID, you know, so, you know, for uh, that delayed, uh, you know, I mean, the world shut down for several months until we had vaccines and enough vaccines that, you know, and then from then on, it was basically retraining the workforce anyway. And uh, yeah, whatever. So where I live now, it's so lovely, but uh, constructed during COVID or whatever. So, you know, but um, looking back and remembering this, I do remember I would come out and I would walk down here. And I, I got on the waiting list as soon as I heard that they were doing it. You know, like I had like a, I've been downtown and people know me and stuff. So someone hit me. They were like, hey, we know you're looking to move. Why don't you just wait it out until, so I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Uh, and then uh, I signed the lease and then COVID and it was like, that really delayed it. But by the time I did that, uh, but, you know, I was like, well, I've waited here and let's see how long it takes them. It took them a while to get this thing built. Uh, <laughs> but four years it took. So I was at the fair. No, it took them uh, uh, two years before I could move in because it was like it was just everything just had to line up. Like I had to come at the end of the lease that I'm in now. Uh, I had to finish that lease out. And then move into to, to this one. You know how that works uh, when when you when you rent property. And I I know there are ways to get out of leases early and everything like that. But it's relatively uh, complex when you're on the waiting list for a sought after uh, uh, property. And then there was the uh, you have to wait for your turn when you're on a waiting list, and maybe you'll get in. Uh, Maybe you won't, you know, for whatever criteria and everything. So, but things really did line up. But while I was waiting, I would come down here uh, and take this walk every night or whatever, whatever, so whatever I was around or whatever, because it was just a uh, just empty ground or something like that. And and basically, I would just pray, you know, to to God uh, that you know, or you know, hope. You know, and I would like stay in communication with, the, hey, how's it going? And by the way, please, you know, whatever. And I really want to, you know, and, and I have to remember that, you know, that, you know, and this is, I think, good for everybody. I feel that sometimes, you know, when we get everything that we were asking for, uh, once the immediate uh, shiny lusteriness of it uh, kind of where it's no longer a new experience and I'm not talking about the uh, the uh, apartment that I'm living in it, it's still a great apartment and everything but just the uh, uh, the newness of it just because just because the new of the experience kind of fades away doesn't mean that my appreciation for it shouldn't still remain you know and uh, that is cool those are good things to think about you know uh, and and I'm saying this as someone who's had like a lot of experiences where I've been on one path and I have felt uh, maybe uh, a dissatisfaction and maybe have a uh, you know, change course, usually without even having a plan uh, in, in play or whatever. Like, this sucks. I'm gonna here. You know, odor. And it's like, you know, uh, th that experience waiting to move over here, because if it wasn't for the hope or the possibility that I might get it into the apartment, 
Um, <clears throat> I would not have stayed in the Fairmont for as long as I did because it really was uh, a small apartment. <laughs> and I don't mean to be ungrateful because I know there are people who don't have an apartment at all, but, but it's a very antiquated building. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. The, that that would vex me. So, anyway. But yeah, I'd come over here and it's, you know, over on the other side. Now, the, the studio that it's next to, the movie studio uh, called uh, G Studios. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, uh, look it up, G Studios. Uh, it's a uh, guys Curtis Jackson Curtis Johnson I don't know but 50 cent that's like he it's his studio uh, and uh, yeah so but we've had we've had we've had uh, you know industry in this town at least uh, 20 years really before then you know uh, but but movie industry kind of stuff but it's been uh, it's we I don't think we've had like an actual like we've had someone come in and this was this studio that's here, the Millennium Studio that was built. Uh and then there's one the Expo Hall was converted and for uh, a couple of big projects that were being filmed, but they were they were gonna build them, make our movies, our projects and stuff like that. And that's cool as long as we're here and that that though that kind that size of industry was here for, for quite a few years, but uh tax credits changed in California, tax uh credit laws changed here in Louisiana, you know, uh and uh you know that 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 those guidelines do what they will do and people uh in the industry adjust accordingly but for a while you couldn't walk through downtown without uh, or throughout most of the city without bumping into somebody who was uh, you know planning a project or something like that you know like I was uh, working in a lot of service industry and uh, almost every day somebody would come in some sort of uh, um, you know uh, assistant production assistant or something like that with with uh pick it up to go order to take back to some something it was it was really kind of cool and then we'd see them do stunt work and everything uh it was kind of cool uh it was cool to see a lot of that i had seen it before though i used to live in new orleans i used to live in miami there were there were a few places where i would see production filming happening as it would happen and when they were uh, doing a lot of on location kind of stuff you know uh, that's cool. But you see, we just came, and the, so the Bayou Grand, it's really, you know, you guys, have, if you follow me, I've taken this walk several times. Uh, but I would come over here, and as I got a little close, all I would see was just behind the, I guess I can step it up. Yeah, I got a few more minutes before I run out of video time. Uh, <laughs> when I started my YouTube channel, I was like, I'm going to cap everything off at like 15 minutes. And then I realized, well, you know, my, my device only gives me about 25 minutes, give or take, before I run out of time. Um, oh, I know. I'm going to pause and go look at how my lights look outside. Ooh, wonderbar. So, uh, I'm nearly home. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out uh, so that I can post it, and then I will come back with a, a shorter video when I get a little closer to my apartment because I want to get a look at how the lights. Uh, <laughs> the story behind that. Uh, so I'll tell you about that when I get up there. But for right now, because if I talk about it now, it's like, why don't I just continue making the video? Eh, whatever. So these are the um, the new front uh, of Bayou Grand, and they're nice. I can't wait to see people in them and they're populating and stuff. They're still 
they're still dressing up. They got the one behind me also, and they're still dressing that up. So that's going to be nice to see. It's going to, you know, enrich the neighborhood. And then, of course, this is the, uh, uh, that big studio and this lot right here also. They're, they're, they're both part, I believe, of the uh, Millennium Studios property that is now uh, G Studios. So look that up. Wish us luck with that. You know, uh, Mark Wahlberg has a production company and a studio that, uh, you know, someone else has one in Atlanta. I don't know. I forget where Mark Wahlberg's is. Is his in Atlanta or is his somewhere else? Maybe around the Midwest or something. I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to it's hard for me to remember. So I'm gonna pause. Hang on. When I come up on people, I want to pause. I don't want to incidentally uh, get someone who doesn't want to be on camera on camera. Uh, what the heck. So I'll go ahead and just say uh, love and light. Peace. God bless. Good night.